oh, by the way, you were supposed to only take six hours for that and it took nine and a half, you're bad. Mm. Not remembering that the one that took supposed to take 10 hours took two and they were, they were great. So it just, get, I think it can cause some issues in certain cases and that's why I tend to shy away from it. Welcome everybody to another episode of Real Agile or BS. I'm your host, Peter Saddington at Agile Peter with my colleague, Bob Hartman at Agile Bob. We're here to answer all of your frequently asked questions around Agile, Scrum, and all the frameworks in 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 encompassed in all of that. And today we're gonna to be attacking a new one. Uh, Real Agile or BS, are breaking backlog, are not breaking backlog items into tasks. Is that Real Agile? Or is that BS? What say you, Bob? Um, I think it's real agile. I think that a lot of teams use training wheels where they break uh, backlog items into tasks, and I don't have any problem with that. But as they mature, I think the real answer is let's not do the overhead of that. Let's understand how to work together on these items, and let's just swarm them and get them done. Uh, let's save ourselves a little time with not having to break them into tasks. However, as training wheels, I think breaking things into tasks can be very helpful because Teams can expose more issues when they break them into tasks. They can expose how they're going to work together better by breaking them into tasks. My concern is when we break them into tasks, we tend to think you're going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. Mm -hmm. Joe's going to do that one. And it doesn't always work out that way. So um, breaking into tasks has that downside. But as training wheels to say, let's expose more of the issues that we think are in there by breaking into tasks. I think it's great. Longer term, not breaking into tasks. I have no problem with that. Uh, unless, I guess the caveat would be, um, if they have really big stories and they're not breaking them down at the task, that could be an issue. But a, a mature team, breaking down smaller stories, working together on them, knocking them out every day or two, no problem with them not doing tasks. I think that would be real agile. I would agree with you. I think it's one of those situations that we've leveraged before in previous episodes of Real Agile or BS, where it's one of those ideas where it's a great introductory tool, it's a great introductory practice, but as your team matures, it's one of those shuhari, like you, as you get more uh, experienced in it as a team, as you gel as a team, and as you're able to understand each other better and effectively communicate and read between the lines, then you might not need to break those stories down into very specific and definitive tasks. Now, I'm going to actually go a little bit towards saying that breaking stories down in tasks is real agile. 100%, I agree with you. And I would even go a little bit farther than you, Bob, and say that even a mature team should still break them into tasks. And let me explain why. We deal with complex systems. And at the end of the day, in my experience, now people can correct me if I'm wrong here, at the end of the day, as much as the product owner understands the product, the value, the ROI, the market, they understand your users, your customers, they understand all this stuff, it has been rare, to, in my experience, to find a product owner who over time, more deeply and deeply understands the technical nuances of their business intent. And so in many cases, I have found that developers who have great tasks are disciplined to write great tasks can help inform that product owner over time around the implications of what they want. Now, certainly teams can learn over time shorthand versions of tasks where they don't have to write out every, I'm building this, or I'm amending this, or I'm changing this, or I'm fixing this, or I'm you know, these types of things. But I think it's important, especially from a CY, not only a CYA perspective, but from an audit and regulatory standpoint when it comes to very complex systems. And so having those tasks written out with discipline, I always like to err on the side of that developers, you guys can get better at writing tasks effectively and quickly, and it'll, it'll cut back some time. But man, I'll tell you, it's one, of those, it's one of those cases where we're building something complex, we have maturity as an Agile or Scrum team, and we've decided not to stop writing tasks, and I've seen it, maybe this has just been my experience, but I've seen it where those teams start falling off. And what I mean by that is people are saying, oh, what did you create again? What was it supposed to be? The story is not as it has enough doesn't have enough detail for me right now uh do we get mixed up in the the jumble here with what we're building and so i always like to tell development teams that it's good to have development tasks almost all the time but this might be one of those cases where it's where we might say well it really is up to the self-organization of the team if they believe that they are mature enough to not have to write stories down into the task level good for them but 
I would err on the side of writing those tasks because, man, I'll tell you, all it takes is, is one guy to show up and say, I have no idea what this story is. What was this all about? It wasn't as expected. You guys said X, but we delivered Y. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, some of the scar tissue left over from being a developer. What say you, Bob? <laughs> Well, that could be, Peter, and, and I think I have scar tissue left over from being a, a manager in various organizations and a VP in, in one. It's just, so my scar tissue is this. As the teams break things into tasks, how many managers will look at those tasks and say, well, why can't you estimate those by hours and just add them up? Uh, and yes. now we get into a negative thing from the other direction. So um, I think there's pluses and minuses to using tasks or not using tasks. And, and I think you're right. It may go down to the self-organization of the team and they have to decide for themselves what work makes sense for them. I don't have a problem either way. I do have a problem if they are trying to get the advantages of not having tasks and they're not mature. And I have the problem of if they're using tasks and getting beat up for it. So uh, as long as the, we can avoid those cases, then I think tasks can be helpful. But it's, it's a, there's a fine line there and you have to understand your organization and, and what the culture of the organization is because it only takes one manager to say, why can't we estimate these by hours and add them up? And then every manager wants that because that's just, that's an easy thing to look at. And now again, we have a punishment metric of saying, oh, by the way, you were supposed to only take six hours for that and it took nine and a half, you're bad. Mm. Not remembering that the one that took supposed to take 10 hours took two and they, they were great. So it just, get, I think it can cause some issues in certain cases and that's why I tend to shy away from it. That's that's fair. I I'll, I'll add a little bit of color commentary to to what I had previously previously stated. I'm again, it's, maybe this again, it's just my bias, but man, software is freaking complex. And I have found when I'm working with other software development teams, writing code myself, by the way, that that tasking it out for me establishes a shared understanding between myself and the rest of the engineers and developers who are working on it as to what I'm specifically and explicitly doing. Not only that is I have found from my own experience as a developer breaking down tasks is that as I break a story down into tasks and let's just say I break it down into 40 tasks, that's a huge indicator that I probably need to split that story even further and it can also uh, allow for other developers who are coming in behind me to understand the reasons and rationale as to why I split the story that way or why I coded it this way. And so I think, again, it, it uh, boils down to the self-organization of the team and the maturity of the team. If I'm working with a high, you know, high performing development team and I know the other developers, we might not need to go through all the tasking for sure. But man, in terms of traceability and helping maybe junior developers come up, and learn about what we're doing, having that task, that path, that pathing of the tasks allows them to understand why we did what we did, why we've integrated with the hardware, why this way, or why we've created this type of API or why we've done development this way. It gives them a lot of context. But again, I think what you said is that management can sometimes take these things and abuse them and leverage them as a, and as a punishment mechanism against the teams. I always have seen, and I'll, I'll leave it here as a, my, my, my last idea is I've always seen tasks as something to help engineers and teams learn about how to break stuff down, how to speak the same language and how to grow with each other. So that's my last, my last two bits is, is breaking a, a user stories into tasks real agile. I think agile Bob and I can completely agree that it is real agile. It's not BS. It's just a matter of how mature and self-organized your team is. I'll leave you with the last word, Bob. I think too, Peter, we have to remember that Agile is used outside the software space. Mm. And in many other domains, I would definitely say let's let's task it out because they don't have as close a working relationship as the various disciplines within software do on many occasions. So at least in my experience, um, especially in the creative domains. So let's have them task it out so that they can work together in different ways and understand those nuances between each other. I think that's an important aspect. Perfect. We'll, we'll take it. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us for this episode of Real Agile or BS, hosted by Agile for All, myself, Peter Saddington, and my colleague, Bob Hartman. Guys, make sure that you subscribe, you smash the like button, and leave us a comment. Let us know if there's any questions that you guys have out there that you want us answered, or if you disagree with us, we'll take that as well. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you guys next time.